Hi students, welcome to class PM. Today we are going to discuss about lenses in the lesson refraction of light at covered surfaces. In the previous session we learned about how the light refracted when it touches the any curved surface, uh, whether it may be a convex surface or a concave surface. So now we will learn about what are the lenses and what is the focal length of the lens. Then coming to how the behavior of certain light rays when they are incident on a lens, how it behaves and what are the rules to draw ray diagram for image formation by lenses. All these things we are going to cover in this session. So coming to the lenses, brief information about lenses, you should understand the terminology of this lenses concept. So we already learned about center of curvature, radius of curvature, principal axis and optic center. Probably this might be a new terminology for you. In the previous session we already discussed about what is center of curvature. In a spherical curve, if you point a center point on the spherical curve, we are considering it as center of that sphere. That is center of curvature. So what is center of curvature? The middle point or center of sphere is called center of curvature. And what is radius of curvature? If you point a middle point on the curved surface, that is considered as, middle point is considered as pole. From pole to center of curvature will give you radius of curvature. The distance between pole and center of curvature is considered as radius of curvature and we are representing this radius of curvature with capital R. And principal axis, what is principal axis? If you draw a line from pole to center of curvature, that line is considered as principal axis. If you have two curved surfaces, that is two lenses, the centers will be two. So we should represent the first spherical mirror, the first surface center as C1 and the second one as C2. So we will be having two centers when we are using with two curved surfaces. And optic center, what is optic center here? See in this picture. So in this picture, if you observe, we are using a lens called biconvex lens. What is this? Biconvex lens. I will tell you the different kinds of lenses in coming session. So this one is biconvex lens. So when we are having a biconvex lens means we are having two lenses, we will be having two centers. The lens middle point is called as P. So the midpoint of a thin lens, the midpoint of a thin lens is called optic center or P. And we are representing focal point will be there. That is nothing but focus that will be explained further. And convex lens is represented with this symbol and concave mirror represents with this symbol. So how the behavior of certain light rays when they are incident on a lens, how the ray will behave. We already discussed about four stages that also considered to this lens. The first case is ray passing along the principal axis and the second case is ray passing through the optic center and in the third case, ray traveling parallel to the principal axis. In the fourth case, we are studying and we are watching the behavior about the ray passing through focus. So in these four cases, how the light ray behaves, we should learn. Coming to the rules to draw ray diagram for image formation by lenses, there are different situations here where the object is placed. So we are having six different situations that is object at infinity. When the object placed beyond the center of curvature on the principal axis and object placed at the center of curvature, how the image is going to be formed and object placed between the center of curvature and focal point, how it behaves, how the image will form. And the other case is object located at the focal point. Then the last case and sixth case is object placed between focal point and optic center. So in these situations, based on the object where it is situated, whether it is infinity distance or it is uh, beyond the center of the curvature on the principal, whatever it may be the cases defined here, how the image is going to be formed, that we will understood with this session. So.
So we are talking about lenses. What is a lens? How the lens is going to be formed? It is a transparent material is bounded by two surfaces of which one or both surfaces are spherical. Even one surface can be spherical or both surfaces can be spherical. So how the lens is going to be formed? You should remember these points. A lens is formed when a transparent material that is see-through material. When a transparent material is bounded together with two surfaces, the two surfaces, one or both surfaces can be spherical. So that the lens is formed. That is, lens is bounded by at least one curved surface. If you want to say anything that see-through material is called lens, it should contain at least one curved surface. That's what the lens means. Lens can be of various types. So let us see here what are the different kinds of uh, lenses here. We can broadly categorize these lenses into converging lenses and diverging lenses. Converging lenses means will uh, converge the image. Will converge the object image. And diverging images means it will diverge the image. It will scatter the image. That's what. If you observe here converging lenses that is biconvex that is both sides convex mirror. So the best example for biconvex mirror is nothing but a our magnifying glass. Then the next variety is plano convex lens. Plano convex lens means the one side it is a plane surface and other side a convex surface. So this one is called as plano convex. Next category is concavo convex. Concavo convex means it is the combination of convex and concave. The one side it is concave surface and the other side it is having convex surface. These are categorized under the converging lenses. If you see diverging lenses, what are the diverging lenses? Biconcave means both side concave lens will be there. So the surface how it look like? It is a crescent like surface. Both sides a crescent like surface will be there. That is called biconcave lens. The next one which is under diverging lens is plano concave. Just now we have seen plano convex. How it is? One side a plane surface and other side convex surface. In the same way here plano concave means the one side plane surface will be there. The other side a crescent like surface that is concave surface will be there. Then the third one in the diverging lens is convexo concave. Convexo concave means it is a combination of convex and concave lenses. So the one side is convex surface will be there. The other side it is having concave surface. A lens may have two spherical surfaces bulging outwards. If a lens is having two spherical surface bulging outwards that is embossed like surface that we can call it as double convex lens. Double convex lens are biconvex. Bi means two. So we are calling this type of lenses are biconvex or double convex lenses. So similarly we already understood about all these lenses. So a double concave lens is bounded by two spherical surfaces curved inwards. That is called double concave lens. In the same way you can understand why we name these lenses as plano convex, concavo convex and plano concave and convexo concave. Based on the surface what it is having we named the lenses. So here what is the important thing in the lens? So we need to consider, we need to concentrate only with thin lenses. That is the thickness of the lens is negligible. So where the thinness is there and how it is going to be impacted on the object. When we see through that lens, how the object will look like, that we need to consider. Here we have to concentrate only with thin lenses. Let us learn the terminology. So to understand these thin lenses, we should understand the terminology what we are using in this concept. So let us understand what is center of curvature and what is radius of curvature. What is optic center? All these things. Each curved surface of a lens is part of a sphere. 
each curved surface. We are saying that lens means it is a combination of two transparent material together. So here we are having two curved surfaces. That is each curved surface of lens is part of a sphere. So the center of a sphere which contains the part of the curved surface is called center of curvature. What is center of curvature here? The center of the sphere. In this picture if you see this is one center for this sphere and this is another center for this sphere. So we are having two centers for each curved surface. So that we are representing with C1 and C2. These two centers are respective to this surface and this curved surface. So this is called center of curvature. It is denoted by the letter C. Here we are having two lenses. We are having two centers so that we are representing with C1 and C2. The distance between the center of curvature and curved surface is called radius of curvature. What is radius of curvature? The distance between the center of curvature and curved surface. And curved surface is called radius of curvature. The radius of curvature are represented with R1 and R2. So the radius for this sphere is R1 and the radius for the second sphere is represented with R2. The line joining the points C1 and C2 is called principal axis. The midpoint of a thin lens is called optic center. In previous cases in the refraction what we learned about the point, the middle point of the curved surface is considered as pole and the line drawn from pole to center is considered as principal axis. Here as we are having two lenses the line drawn between two centers of two spherical mirrors is considered as principal axis and the center point of the spherical mirrors that is the midpoint of a thin lens is called optic center. Optic center is represented with letter P that is nothing but pole in the refraction. So the line drawn from center pole and C1 is called a principal axis. Let us understand focal length of a lens. What is focal length? A parallel beam of light incidence on a lens, it converges to a point on the principal axis. So where the converging happens on the principal axis, that point is considered as focal point. So in that point, the image will be eminent. That point is considered as focal point or focus which is represented with F. For drawing ray diagrams related to lenses, we represent convex lens with a symbol with double-ended and concave lens with a less than symbol both side of the line. See this picture here and this, this is the lens and when light ray incidence on the lens, how it is converging? It is converging on the point F1. So, we understood that every lens is having Two focal points are nothing but two focuses. So we are indicating those focal points as F1 and F2. This is one point and this is another point. F1, F1 is the place, is the point where all the light rays converges. So that here the image will be eminent. And C1, C2 are the centers of the spherical surfaces or spheres. See in this picture also, we are representing this one. C1, C2 are the centers of the spherical mirrors and observe these arrows. It is arrow like thing means the arrow represents that it is the convex lens and reverse arrow is represent that this is the concave lens so that it is the rays will be diverged. Now we understood that how the rays are passing through the lenses. And we understood that rays will be bended. Bending may be either converging or diverging. So that how does the lens form an image? We understood till this topic. So when the light rays scattered or converge, how the image is going to be formed? So to understand that how the formation of image by lenses will happen, we need to know the behavior of light rays when they meet a lens. So we need to understand the behavior of a light rays. We already know that lenses have two surfaces. 
While drawing a ray diagram, we can consider the lens as single surface element because we assume that the thickness of the lens is very small and show the net refraction at only one of the surfaces. The picture is given here. Observe these pictures. What we need to consider is a, it is a very thin glass so that we should consider it as a one single glass though it is having two surfaces. Now with these pictures we can understand the behavior of light rays how it behaves when it touches the a curved surface or a lens. As we already discussed about a refraction situations that there are four situations. So here also we can use that same scenario to compare these lenses how the rays will be bended in the each and every situation. Let us see the first situation. In the previous session when we are discussing about the refraction of light we discussed about a ray passing through the principal axis will not deviate and a ray passing through the normal also will not deviate. That is the first situation we discussed in the refraction of light. In the lenses also same concept. Situation 1, a ray passing along the principal axis will not be deviated. It means that a ray passing along the principal axis is undeviated. It will not deviate. In the situation 2, ray passing through the optic center. Optic center we understood that. Optic center is representing with the letter P. That is the center of the optic. In the second situation, a ray passing through the optic center also not deviate. It is undeviated. See here these pictures, this one and this one. You can observe here a ray passing through the center. It is not going to be deviated and a ray passing through the principal axis also will not deviate. For first situation, this is the figure. A ray passing through the principal axis will not deviate and a ray passing through the center of the optic will not deviate. There is another situation, a ray traveling parallel to the principal axis. It means that it is not traveling through the principal axis, it is parallel to the principal axis. When we say the parallel, this is the principal axis. When the light travels, another ray travels parallelly to the principal axis. We are calling that one as parallel rays. So the third situation is ray traveling parallel to the principal axis. We know that the ray passing parallel to the principal axis converge at a focus. It converge at a focus or appear to diverge from the focus as shown in this figure. So in this figure, see how it is converge. A ray traveling parallel to the principal axis will converge at one point that is called focus. When it is converged on the focal point, again it will scatter. It will diverge from that focal point so that the picture, the image will be eminent in that point. Here we should understand if we allow a light ray to pass through the focus, which path does it take? Let us see that. In situation 4, ray passing through focus. Light ray obey the principle of least time. So it obeys the principle of least time. Hence, the ray passing through the focus will take a path parallel to the principal axis after refraction. Even after refraction, it will take the path of parallel to the principal axis. See in these pictures, they mentioned here, a ray passing through the focus, what it will happen? It will take the same path as the principal axis. What happens when parallel rays of light fall on a lens making some angle with the principal axis? So, okay, what is the situation here? What happens when parallel rays of light fall on a lens making some angle with the principal axis? So here, it is the incidence of light with the angle. Let us observe the following figures. So here in this figure, it is making some angle with the principal axis. So this is the principal axis. The principal axis is combining center of uh, both the surfaces, center of the lens that is nothing but P. So that is called principal axis and the light rays incidence on the lens with some angle. So when parallel rays making an angle with principal axis fall on a lens as shown in this figure, the ray converge at a point or appear to diverge from a point laying on the focal plane. It means that if you draw a dotted line vertically from the focal point, somewhere on the focal plane only the rays will be converged. 
focal plane is a plane perpendicular to the principal axis at the focus. So then if you understand this concept, let us understand the rules to draw ray diagrams for image formation by lenses. Now we understood that how the rays are bending. If the ray is parallel to the principal axis, what will happen? If the parallel rays are making some angle with the principal axis, what will happen? How the ray is going to be formed and where that image is going to be converged, where that rays are going to be converged and what is a focal plane? A focal plane is nothing but a vertical line drawn on the focal point which is perpendicular to the principal axis. Now let us see rules to draw ray diagram for image formation in lenses. Let us learn about few basic concepts that is basic rules to draw ray diagrams to locate the position of images. Based on the location of the image, the image is going to be formed. For drawing a ray diagram to find position and size of the image formed by lens, for any position of object on the principal axis, you need to follow the rules. What are those rules? Let us see here. For local position and to find a size of image, we need two rays out of four rays that were mentioned in the situation 1 and 4. So we have seen four situations here. For locating position and to find the size of image, what to do? For locating position and to find the size of image, we need two rays out of four situations. Select a point on the object placed at the point on a principal axis. Draw two rays that were chosen by you from rays mentioned in the situation 1 to 4. So what we need to do? We need to draw two rays that were chosen our own interest. We can choose whatever ray we want. From rays should be in these four situations only. A ray passing through the principal axis or a ray passing through the optic center or a ray parallel to the principal axis. These are the situations. Extend both rays to intersect at a point. This point gives position of image. Where the rays are intersecting that point, the image will be positioned. Draw a normal from point of intersection to the principal axis. So when you draw a normal to the point of intersection to the principal axis, length of this normal represents the size of the image. What the normal is indicating? Normal represents the size of the image. Now let us see these pictures. And we should consider different situations where the object is placed. We have six situations here. Let us observe each situation one by one. What is that? They represent image formation by a convex lens for various positions of the objects. Based on the position of the object, it is going to give image in different situations. So, the first instance, that is nothing but the first situation is object at infinity. What do you mean by an object at infinity? What type of rays fall on the lens? We know that the ray falling on the lens from an object at infinity are parallel to the principal axis. So, an object is located some infinite distance, the rays will always will be parallel to the principal axis. See this picture. In this picture, the object somewhere located and at the infinite distance when the rays are coming, so those rays look like it is parallel to the principal axis as shown in this figure. All these rays converge to the focal point. All these rays converging at the focal point mentioned here. So a point size image is formed at the focal point. This can be seen here. So what is the image size here at the focal point? Here a point size image can be seen. Point size image can be seen at the focal point when the object is located from infinite distance. All the rays will be parallel to the principal axis and they will converge at the point. That point is called as focal point or focus. At the focus point, the image will be like a dot image. In the second situation, object placed beyond the center of curvature on the principal axis. See here. Center of curvatures, we are having a lens here. The center of curvature C1 and C2 are there. The object is placed beyond the center of curvature. Where is the object is located here? It is 
not in the range of center of curvature, out of the center of curvature. That is nothing but beyond the center of curvature. When the object is placed at beyond the center of curvature, how the light rays falling on the lens, incidence on the lens, how it is going to be bent. In this picture, you notice that where object is placed beyond the center of curvature, a real inverted image and diminished image can be seen. Where it is going to be formed? It is going to be formed on the principal axis between the points F1 and C1. That is focal 1 and center of curvature 1. In between these two points, the image is going to be formed. Which type of image is that one? It is a diminished image and inverted image. Here we have chosen two rays, that is one ray passing parallel to the principal axis and another ray passing through the optic center that is located in the position of the image. So when we take two rays, that is one ray is passing parallel to the principal axis, another ray passing through the P, that is the center point of the optic, it gives image, inverted image and where it is going to be formed, it is going to be formed in between focus of First F1 and center of curvature C1. You try to draw the diagram using the pair of rays and passing parallel to the axis another passing through the focus. So this is focus. When a ray passing through the focus, what will happen? You try for yourself. And the third situation is object placed at the center of curvature. When an object is placed at the center of curvature on the principal axis, you will get an image at C1. It is real inverted and of the same size as that of the object. When it is kept at the center of the curvature, the image is going to be placed. How the image will be? It is the same size as that of the original image with the inverted image. Not the actual image. Inverted image with the same size will appear. Let us see the fourth case. Object placed between the center of curvature and focal point. When the object is placed in between center of curvature and focal point, that is nothing but focus, we will get an image with real, inverted and magnified image. But the image is where it is forming? It is forming beyond the C1, that is center of curvature. So with this picture we can understand this one. Object is placed between C2 and F2 and where image is forming? Image is forming beyond the center of curvature which is inverted and magnified in size. The fifth case is object located at the focal point. Now where we are keeping object is kept at the focal point. When an object is placed at focus that is focal point the image will be infinity. They are not intersecting anywhere. So this figure shows that when the image is formed at the infinite distance away we cannot discuss the size and nature of the image. So when we keep an object at the focal point, the image formed at the infinite distance so that we cannot observe the image size or nature. The next situation is object placed between focal point and optic center. So now we are taking the object forward to the optic center. So object placed between focal point and optic center if we place an object between these two points, we will get an image which is virtual, erect and magnified. How the image is going to be? Image nature will be, it is virtual image which is erect and magnified. See this picture. The image will be, it is virtual image and it is magnified image and it is erected. So as the position, how the object is, as it is not inverted, it is erected image. So from the ray diagram of this one, we can notice that image formed is a virtual erect and is formed on the same side of the lens. Formed at the same side of the lens, not the opposite side of the lens where the object is placed. The size of the image is larger than that of the object and is magnified image. In this situation of image formation, we understand two things. What are those? As the image formed is virtual, we can see it with our eyes. In all other cases, the image is real, which we cannot see with our eyes, but can be viewed if the image is captured on a screen. The other difference is, a magnified virtual image is formed on the same side of the lens where the object is placed. Thus, the image you are seeing through a lens is not real. 
it is a virtual image of the object. This particular behavior of convex lens helps to construct a microscope which gives a magnified image. You might remember that the magnification of a virtual image is possible only when the object is at the distance less than the focal length of a lens. So when we can see the virtual image, the condition is the distance should be, the object is at the distance less than the focal length of the lens. Till now we have drawn ray diagrams for various positions of object placed on a principal axis using convex lens. Let us see a ray diagram for an object placed between C1 and F1 for a concave lens. See here, this is the concave lens which is represented with the ends like this, that is less than symbol. So what do you notice when you use the convex mirror? Verify your ray diagram with the convex lens. See this ray diagram here. We can notice that irrespective of the position of object where it is located on the principal axis, we will get an erect virtual image and diminished in size in between the focal point and optic center for a concave lens. Where the image is forming? It is forming in between focal point and optic center. Focal point and optic center. This one we should remember. Always, irrespective of anything, the object, when we are using concave lenses, we can get erect virtual image and diminished image. Let us see this example. Draw a ray diagram to locate the position of image when a point source, that is S, is placed on an optical axis MN of a convex lens in such a way that it is beyond focal point F2 and we can see that in a figure. Let us see the solution for this. Draw a perpendicular line to principal axis passing through the focus. So we need to draw this perpendicular line through the focus. Draw a ray from point source. Point source is S. In any direction to meet lens at point P dash. P is the center of the optic. That is nothing but optic center. So from the source you need to draw a ray which is incident on the lens that is called P dash. Now draw another line parallel to the ray drawn from the point source P such that it passes through the optic center. A line, this is the line passing through the optic center and which is parallel to the previous ray which we have drawn. This line intersects at point FO. So FO is nothing but it is a line vertically drawn on the focal point. Now draw a line passing from point P dash to pass through the point FO such that it meets principal axis at a point says some I. So we are indicating this point as I. I is the image point for the point source S. So where the image is going to be formed? In the I point the image is going to be present. Just go through the example 5. So complete the ray diagram to show the paths of rays after refraction through the lens shown in figure. In this figure they have given rays here. Just find out the solution. They have given here follow the steps mentioned in example 4 which we have discussed to complete the ray diagrams. We can notice that the paths of the rays are shown in this figure or like this. So we have drawn from source to incidence on the optic lens and it is converged at a place and another ray which is passing through the center of the optic so that it is nothing but P. So these are parallel lines. Vertically we are drawing a line at the focus and where it intersects the principal axis the image formation will happen there. So this is how we need to understand how to draw the ray diagram to find out where the image is going to be formed. In the next session, we will discuss about lens formula and magnification concept. Till then, thank you.